want to see the all start? Well, it's a very short story. I was in the mood to shell some money. <laughs> I'm Maria Migliora. Welcome to my channel. Today I really want to skip on an intro because we have a lot to go through. You saw the title, it is a haul. I've been <laughs> I've been shopping with such intensity as if like there's gonna be no other day, no other time to do it. So uh, so I want to show you some of my kind of like rare to find lux and niche purchases. I kind of do like to flip them by you know price or bar like rarity I don't know like it doesn't make sense or should I just show you things as they come in any without any structuring because I usually I kind of do like to watch designer hauls and then separately niche hauls and that's how I thought I would group kind of things that I buy myself but you let me know maybe you like having some kind of a, a sort of a festival of different classes of perfumes of different price point or different kinds of complexity or rarity Actually, it might be more fun than just having them by like these strict groups. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm like overanalyzing, overthinking this. But anyway, today we're gonna do a uh, sort of a more luxe, limited edition or you know boutique lines of designer perfumes or niche. So actually, there's no better way to start than to show you this beauty. So I have uh, been shopping on Mercari quite a bit because I. Um, I was fortunate enough that some of my perfumes sold and I had some cash to spend and there was a, a wonderful uh, wonderful lady who was selling uh, this tra two travel size Killians but look at this it's actually the the gift box it's signed by him the Killian himself yeah it says for Sula from Killian with love. Can you believe that? No, you can't see anything, it's like too white. Oh my god, like I think I'll post like an Instagram story or something. By the way, like if you're not like if we're not connected on Instagram yet, let's let's do that. Like good people should know each other. It's the same handle as here on YouTube. It's Miliora Maria or Maria Miliora. I always mix those two together. I think it's Miliora, Mar Miliora Maria. Yeah. Anyway. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> should I, like, is it worth millions? I don't know, but it was kind of cool. Yeah, I don't know. I've never, I actually have never got anything that was personally signed, you know, by like a celebrity or like a really well-known business person. Well, it obviously shows that somebody didn't value the connection with the author of these perfumes <laughs> to sell it on their curry. Anyway, yeah, you get basically uh, a set and a travel, um, travel atomizer. I presume one was used up and they were just selling uh, the leftover. So the fragrance that I got, let's get to the juice. It's called Le... Oh my God, that... Liaisons, right? Liaisons? Liaisons Dangerous. I can't speak French. Basically, Dangerous Liaisons. So this uh let's get some let's get some paper this is supposed to be like a classic very much dna of killian line scent and what they do the best what they're known for is musky fruity musks basically like kind of actually similar to mikolif but Mikolev's musks are a little bit more fruity and a little bit more cheerful. Killian fruity musks are supposed to be, and they do deliver on that promise, they are way more... Well, to me, they kind of tend to be more on the sweaty side and like kind of like they go toward body odor for me sometimes. But for many people, they really smell sexy and kind of like seductive and sweaty, this kind of like... You know, after uh, after a night full of fun kind of stuff. So, this is quintessential Killian fruity musk, I would say. I don't know if it's a lychee, apricot, peach, or something, but it's definitely fruity, musky, almost a little bit sweaty and sour. 
it doesn't go too far for example the limited line that they issued specifically for the russian market that was like bdsm don't ask me why but it was a, it was bdsm themed all of those were had the mask turned the volume of that mask were turned up like a thousand times it was i couldn't bear those this is a little bit more classy a little bit more it's like um night in upscale bar uptown rather than you know grinding <laughs> downtown in a lake and getting like two dollar beers i do like it i'm not sure if it could ever be anything that i would consider buying the full bottle for but giving two travels killians oh, i don't have to tell you they're like crazy expensive so here i have two little vials with uh, 0.25 ounces, which is 7.5 mill milliliters. So I have like a 15, almost yeah, 15 milliliters. That's pretty decent. I think that will last me well enough, so I can play with it, sort of make an opinion. But I really, at this point, I can't see myself falling in love with this to the degree that I'll buy a full size bottle. But I do like to sample sort of hyper luxe and like hyper exclusive perfumes every once in a while just to kind of keep tabs on what's going in the hyper luxury market as well but to be honest rarely ever i find something that makes me dream of those uh, creations usually usually the quality is there usually marketing and product kind of product fit uh is superb and then it's basically whether it's your kind of product you're willing to like spend that that much money for or not for me, most of the time, I'm just mildly curious. So Killian's, for me, kind of fall into that niche right now, that I'm mildly curious, but I wouldn't really shell any of my hard-earned money to buy a full-size bottle of any of them, at this point, at least. All right, so that was uh, what the find that I found on Mercari. I think I got it for decent price. I mean, much, much cheaper than if I got it from a um, brand new in the store. And obviously signed by Killian. I don't know, there was something <laughs> something silly <laughs> about it that I really liked. So I was like, oh, I have a box signed by Killian, damn it. Um, another sampler, this is actually, I bought new. This is Performs de Marley, and um, who haven't, who hasn't heard about it? I think it most, it's most known because Demi Rowing like just praised and praised their uh, perfumes. So I decided to give it a go. So I have four here, basically four teeny tiny samples. Uh, to be honest, paying like full price for two milliliter samples still seems like it's a bit crazy expensive for me. I think when we're talking about like little plastic vials that contain one milliliter perfume, Hyperlux. Either either you have to pack your one milliliter milliliter as if it's some the most precious stone or vial that is just that makes it worth the fifty dollar price. When it's just like a simple, you know, like as any other sample, I don't get it. Like, come on, if you're selling a bottle for four hundred dollars, you can give this for free, or you know, I don't know. It's just that's just my thing. I feel like. I, I'm patiently waiting when the perfume industry kind of like finds itself back into giving samples for free and not buying them for some ridiculous price. But that's me digressing. So the things that I have here are Darcy, it's already in my purse, Sadbury, what's the other one, Safanad, and Athalia. And what's the fourth one? Oh, here we go, it fell through. Um, it is... <laughs> named after me, Miliora. <laughs> Gosh, I was so... I, was, I, I felt so clever when I found my nickname, Miliora. It's like uh, from Latin, more, better, shiny, you know, kind of like toward better things. And then I discovered that Perfums de Marley had a perfume with exa this exact name, Miliore, but, you know, I can keep being delusional and say that they just named it after my channel, obviously. Anyway, so I've been kind of, like, giving them a go. I also have Delina. 
as a sample that was given to me by a lovely subscriber. Still undecided on whether I'm willing to really shell any money for any of the bo these bottles. We'll see. I, I need more time. I, I can definitely say that they are well made. I'll give them that. But in terms of the shape of the bottles, in terms of kind of the whole concept, I'm not, I'm not sold yet, to be honest, but we'll see. This was a complete blind purchase. I read too many comments on Fragrantica and I decided that, oh my god, oh my god, I have to get acquainted with this historic perfume house. And the comments were such, there was like, oh my god, this is probably the best classic retro perfume that, like, the one that everyone needs. So I bought it, and this is Perfume Sacré by Caron. Truly, truly historic house. Um, you can look it up. I, I don't want to lie, like, when exactly it was formed, but it's... It, it's one of the oldest ones that it, that still survives to this day. So they actually rebottled their perfumes recently. So this is what the new ones look like. I think I yeah I do like the form factor, but if if I if I allow myself one criticism, first of all, half of the box is empty, so it's just full of full of paper. So the perfume sits like at the top. I'm, I don't know, I'm not into big boxes, to be honest. I feel like it's wasteful. And another thing, I, I really like the, the lid. It's very heavy. It looks like it's ceramic or even metal. The only thing that could be better is that the name of the perfume itself is basically a glued piece of paper. Um, I wish they found some other way to display the name of the fragrance here because the Caron Paris is in small teeny tiny letters at the very bottom. I feel it's just very disproportionate the way that they chose to display the name of the house and just glued a strip of paper on the top. Um, it probably looks good in the pictures but in person it makes, makes the bottle look cheaper than it is. But in terms of the shape of the bottle, in terms of the the lid, it's like it all makes me feel of like good old kind of old timey luxury. About the smell itself, let's find a piece of paper to give it a go. So parfum sacré, it's a it's an oldie. It got reformulated a couple of times, but to this day it's one of like better known of fragrances by this historic house. I guess I'm not ready to tell you my final opinion about it. If you're curious, I can maybe like start doing series of my final opinions on this channel. But the first impression, because I bought it blindly, it smells old to me. Like, I know it's a horrible adjective to say, nobody knows what that means. I do have some retro retro perfumes in my collection that I actually love and wear. But this is one of those rare occasions when I smell it and it's like, ooh, that's like, seems like something a grandma of a grandma of the grand, 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 grandma would wear. And I don't understand what gives it this flavor. It's like... It's like a really old attic. I mean, it's definitely rich. It's... It's kind of... Smoky, woody, sweet, but almost kind of burned amber kind of type. But something in it makes me think of old soiled clothing, you know, like the kind of clothing you find abandoned in suitcases for 30 years. Both dusty and a little bit of mossy or wet. It's almost like there's some mold in there. Maybe that it is, maybe that's it. Maybe it has some patchouli and that gives me that impression of mold. Anyway, it makes me think of 
old houses. I guess that would be the case with like rotting wood, a bit of mold. Some people love it. Some people, like me, I guess I'm less into that kind of mood. It's also a big question how it wears in different temperatures, cold versus hot, humid versus dry climates, and the skin chemistry. So I will definitely try to wear it because I can definitely tell how well it is blended, how well it is balanced. It seems like it will last a long time, it has a lot of character, so all of the technical qualities are there. I'm just not sure about the profile, if I can pull it off. But this is my first ever perfume from Cajon. Um, I hope I'm saying it correctly, I'm probably not. Caron. I will say it in sort of with English accent. Um, I'm intrigued, but to be honest, I'm kind of scared of buying any other perfumes from them now. If you really like that brand, please let me know what is like more less retro <laughs> what is more wearable in the modern times from that house because i really want to learn about their history and appreciate um the old factory development kind of like get acquainted of how things used to be even if they are imitated with more novel materials i'm still like very curious about the history of sort of old, old factory fashion how it was then how it is now um Obviously, it's all heavily affected by the state of technology and chemistry at the time and now. But I also want to wear my perfumes. I I'm sure you know what I mean. Like, as much as I am curious on scientific and just, like, kind of, like, um, perfume enthusiast level, I also do want to enjoy my perfumes and not just to have a library for the sake of just collecting relics. So, Perfumes Sacré, so far... Seems like I just bought a very expensive, very old book that is written in medieval English that I can't quite understand. You know what I mean? So we'll see about that. The next one, I actually constantly mix those two houses because for whatever reason, they sound similar to me. This is another rare one. It's very hard to find, um, especially for good price. This is Car Carven, also a very top-notch designer house but I would say it's kind of niche because it's, it's hard to find it's not in every Sephora not many people know about it um, and they I think they issued sort of like a geographical collection something like that and one of those was got some stellar reviews in the very similar fashions to Perfume Sacré that is a beautiful nod to retro yet it is still modernized and sophisticated and uptown New York and this and this and that. It's called Paris Mascot. Paris Mascot. And as I said, the brand is Carven. Carvin? Probably Carvin. I gotta say, I do enjoy the packaging of this one way more. Uh, it's white, matte, and a little bit imprinted paper with some what is it leaf I don't know if you can tell it's very it's it's very stylish and here's the bottle beautiful presentation would make a very sophisticated gift this is what it looks like it's actually metal the latest metal about the scent is itself let's find a piece of paper this one I actually wore a couple of nights sort of trying to get a feel for it you know again something is similar between oddly enough both are bought blindly I don't know how it just coincided that they seem similar to me in the sense that both of them both of them are ambery kind of heavy-ish very well blended with a strong profile, but there's no sharp edges to the way that the um, fragrance opens. And both are definitely retro. This is the kind of retro, I kind of feel it's definitely a little bit more, it, it, it translates better to modern times, at least to my nose. And the way that it's differs to the, from the previous one, the previous one really had this, as I said, like this weird moldy note that made me think of like old houses. This one makes me actually think of candied fruits or maybe 
there's something about it that makes me think of candy. But, you know, obviously not the kind of candy you meet in Victoria's Secret perfumes or like liquid sugar. Just like a handmade caramels or something. Hmm. There's something really edible about it. I can tell you that. It's a gourmand retro. And I think since gourmand are taking such a prominent place in in our modern perfume And since the gourmands made such a vibrant comeback into the modern perfume culture, I think Carven Paris Muscat really does translate into the kind of contemporary sophistication with a bit of a um, nostalgia for the good old times, you know, things like that. So I am very curious to actually give it a go way more than I am about Perfume Secret, to be just completely honest. So I think I will wear it. Um, and I will definitely try to make it work with, with Caron. I'm not giving up on it yet, but it's definitely... A, between the two, if I had to recommend one as this like strong, characteristic, amberish, retro, but done now by like modern houses, kind of hyper luxe or historic perfume house scent, I would probably go with Carven Paris Muscat. In other historic house, I'm so excited to get more acquainted with it because I got there. Okay, let me tell you what it is first. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Robert Piguet, and I got Bon Noir. I think it's like black spices, right? Am I translating it correctly? So I got my first Robert Piguet. Again, <clears throat> you, see, you see, like I have like a soft spot for historic houses there's some like aristocratic bullshit that lives in my head that makes me kind of like crave that flair of the good old times you know the the, the sophistication of the old times there's there's some dreamy word that it creates in my mind that i kind of want to emulate in real life so robert Brigay, another very old house just shaped a whole generation of a gen after a generation of perfumes was groundbreaking perfumer who first introduced tuberose as a wearable perfume because it was considered really like a moviton was like a bad idea to wear any heavy white flowers especially tuberose for for a long time it's considered to be like one of the best worst ideas to wear you know, try to use tuberose for perfumes. So Fracas by Robert Piguet completely changed the landscape of, of fragrances at the time. So it is still a surviving um, perfume house. A lot of them are gone, obviously, as many fashion houses of the past. So all of these perfumes obviously are reformulated, probably modernized to a large degree. Uh, but as far as I know, a lot of experts say that they do uh, worked hard to preserve their feel and kind of the the portfolio, olfactory portfolio that these uh, names are supposed to represent. So the black black spices is uh, oh, it's a smoky kind of plummy. Like that's you know everyone's favorite for winter. Smoky plummy. Spicy liquor. Mmm, it's delightful. It's like, it's hard to say, is it cherry, is it plum? It's just, it's a bit smoky and it's even a little bit, there's something else in here. You know, I actually will need to wear it on my skin to tell you more. We will definitely come back to that. I'm, I'm thinking actually of making sort of a Christmas edition, all these like smoky, cherry slash plummy plus alcohol notes like liquor or rum or whiskey. If you're interested in doing some winter edition perfumes, let me know in the comments below. So I will be definitely, definitely playing with this. I haven't really spent any time 
with it so i just wanted to show you everything so i can finally put it in their places and kind of start indulging and trying to use them more often so boy 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 noir black spices barber Piguet. it's a very very good addition to my collection and um just so you know most of my niche purposes are blind i rarely have a chance to try these perfumes anywhere so every once in a while i do surprise myself with something that i don't know how to make work and some most of the time i kind of peruse for grantica notes comparisons i look at the reviews of people whose taste i understand well even the if, even a video blogger uh, has a very different taste of mine and they recommend a perfume as long as I understand the bounds and the limits of their taste I can make a judgment on whether it will or will not work for me. Now we'll talk about Ailey Saab. I have a love-hate relationship with Ailey Saab because they make these like <clears throat> I have a, I have a <laughs> I have a little sketch about it or how to say like an impression that I do all Ellie Sal perfumes to me sound like I don't know how else to describe it because they're all so sweet and powdery it's like if somebody filled a room with flowery sort of floral powder they're they are not smoky and seductive like some heavy or arabic perfumes but they are always and they're not as liquid sugary as Livia Bell's and Black Opium's but Ellie Saab's perfumes are so sweet and so souffle-ish in, in, in their texture to me <laughs> it's always like it's almost like it's some kind of like cake that keeps that just melts on the sun <laughs> That's how I see them. So I do like them, but I can't wear them. They, they constantly, they're smothering to me. But there is one, there is one, that I bought a miniature and I just kept coming back to it. And I kept coming back to it. And I was like, this is Elisea, so Maria, you don't like Elisea, stop it. It's not our thing, move on. I used up the whole miniature and I had to buy it. It's one of the most luxurious royal rose perfumes in my collection. So that is Essence Number no. 1 Rose. So Elisab also has this boutique line which is more expensive than the usual perfumes you find in any store. If you look online at different discount stores or eBay or Mercari, you can find it for like decent-ish price. And by decent, I mean, I don't know, $70, $80. That's pretty good for, for, for these kind of boutique lines. But again, judge by your budget. This is like a rose parfait. This is that sweet sugar powder, just filling the air but it's a rose parfait it's a rose souffle it's so tastefully done to in my humble opinion this is the best of the whole line i also had a mini of gardenia and that is a very vanilla heavy gardenia that one is a little bit more toward vanilline like edible vanilla scent some people like it i'm not not so much but this is the most unique, in my personal opinion, take on a, a like a, a rose-centric perfume. Because rose has been done and overdone, and it will be done and will be overdone. There are so many perfumes with rose as a center um, of the pyramid that it's kind of hard to find the one that will surprise you or the one that will stand out. To me, this is a very unique take on rose that also has the signature Elisab DNA. So I'm very happy that I bought it. Mm, it's perfect for winter. All right. This, I'm not gonna, even going to open this because it's it's a double. Oh, I know, I know. I said I'm like, 
I don't buy dumbbells. I'm not that kind of person. Yes, I am. I heard that Serge Lutens has been discontinuing this format of some of their perfumes and I just... I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. It's like, alright, I'll buy it. Even if I get bored of it by the time I need to open the second bottle, I'll just sell it. I'll sell it. I'm sure I'll be able to sell it. So this is a double of Vitriol d'Oulet. Oulet? I think Oulet. Um, so this is basically a very seductive, almost animalistic um, carnation. I do like carnation. I know that a lot of people have a trouble wearing it and it seems like too almost evil or aggressive or kind of like merciless type of note uh, to many people. So, you know, I, I'm not going to recommend it, but for people like me, I do like carnation type smells. I do like spicy peppery notes in in fragrances i absolutely love this perfume i already have one bottle so now i have a double a backup all right this was a blind purchase because i really like the notes and this is a again more in sort of expensive i don't know more elite boutique line of oh, let me pull it out and i bought a tester of perry ellis Ellis? Alice? Alice? So this is what it looks like. Mine is called Saffron Rose Absolute. Saffron Rose Absolute. What can I say about the packaging? To me, the packaging, it is heavy. It seems like it's substantial. But all of the angles, the plastic inside, it, it looks cheap. To be honest, even if you look at the very similar um, shape, but here the lid, even though it's plastic, it's heavier. Every single line, it's very polished and thin. All of the parts here in Eliseab, just it's just very well crafted. Every angle of it. This is kind of like just it's it's a bit rough. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't really buy it as a gift. I wouldn't buy it full price. But if you find it in discount stores, um, think about whether the olfactory profile fits your taste. So the this is an oud line. They have several ouds. Uh, I got saffron rose because I have all other ouds in my collection and like in many variations. I was curious about saffron plus rose plus oud. To be honest, it's one of those easy to wear woody sweet evening perfumes that i can throw in without thinking but at the same time i think i can easily find at least three perfumes in my collection that sound very similar to that actually let me pull a few and these cost like i think they cost cheaper than this i actually got this in fragrance nat for maybe 35 bucks something like that so that's already like not not very expensive but i think these two are even like under 20. so the one that i actually like just as much if not more is a what is it i think it's it's the black oscar de la renta i think it's called midnight amber if i'm not mistaken i do like the packaging way more the form factor is better here and I find that they are they're not exactly the same but they they do share a lot in common and the other one that I actually am wearing in my it's in my purse in the like atomizer somewhere uh, it is Fifth Avenue Royale version by Elizabeth Arden it's kind of like only the matter of taste uh, in terms of the packaging which one you would prefer but I would say you don't need all three they are really really similar in a way I can wear this as a day fragrance because even though they're oudish and kind of uh, have some liquor sweet kind of sweet liquor notes they are not super powerful at least these two don't last as long and they're 
they're kind of like an echo of truly heavy gourmands. And I gotta say the same goes for this uh, Saffron Rose Absolute by Perry Ellis. Um, I'm a bit of a bottle snob, not in the sense that I my taste is the only one that, <laughs> that matters, but I do have preferences and I do want to all of the all of the objects around me to kind of fit with with what pleases my eye. I'm not saying that this is not going to please somebody's eye, but for me, I mostly like it for the juice, don't like it for the bottle. Again, I don't know if you can see it, but like this whole thing is just very... It's not very refined, shall I say. Let's, okay. Let's move on though. All right. I think I, at this point, made Sandbird <laughs> like super rich because I'm one of the most prolific buyers uh, of their decants. And I'm not even sponsored, can you believe it? Anyway, I am now getting three decants a month. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Judge all you want, but my queue is so long that to get through it in the next three years, I need to speed it up. So, I also like their form factor, and they recently onboarded Tiziana Serenzi. Did you hear? Did you hear? Yeah, so they're actually like my prayers were heard. They're expanding their niche collaborations, which I'm super happy about. Anyway, so the ones that I got this month, I God, I'm try I'm retrying <laughs> my relationship with Amouage. Infamous, infamous European slash Arabic brand. It's huge in Russia. It's like I don't know where where our women get that kind of money, but like every single one has at least one Tom Ford, at least one Killian, at least one Amouage. Mm, I haven't really heard of. Uh, about it as much in English speaking perfume community, but I think it's fairly known at this point. So I got Interlude Woman, which is, you know, I feel like we're running out of time. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick one. I'll do a quick spray and I'll let you know. I already wore it a couple of times, I just want a, a refresh. So amouages are really known for their extra zesty, powerful, kind of grabby base that stays with you until you wash your clothes or take a shower. For that very reason, for a long time I couldn't really wear them because it was too much for me. They were too powerful, too complex, too loud. This to me... Oh, you see, it is also sweet, also seductive, also kind of has some alcoholic liquor notes in it. But here, I hear incredible sophistication. My nose just keeps trying to guess what is it, what, what it is. While with other versions that I just showed you, those are just kind of monochord. They give you an impression, but they don't, don't take you in the journey. This one, again, and this is Interlude Woman. Mm. This one I need to study. I will definitely talk about it more the more I wear it. Um, very high quality perfume, very strong, very powerful, very complex in the way that it opens. Definitely of that kind of heavier, um, sweet liquor plus either some berries or something like that with it. Uh, it's, it's really worth studying a little bit more. Another one that I got is sort of a complete opposite in a way. It's Atelier Bleurem New Amsterdam. So Atelier Bleurem is kind of famous for their high-tech sort of megapolis, you know, big city sophistication. A bit industrial, a bit... a bit always a little bit dusty. I do like it. New Amsterdam. I heard a lot about it. It's one of their best sellers. This is kind of why it piqued my interest as well. Urban sophistication, that's the short way I would go about describing this particular brand. Atelier Bleu is definitely to keep in mind if, you're, if you are if you want to be like one of those cool web designer kids. Um, okay, this, I was just curious, what's the whole fuss about? This is Juliet Has a Gun, Vanilla Vibes. Yes, it's in every Sephora. 
yes, Juliet has a gun, is trying to re repeat the fame of eccentric molecules, doing kind of like this primitive Ambroxan one molecule sense, and yeah, not a perfume, yada yada. And Vanilla Vibes is their take, I think, on infamous Estee Lauder bronze goddess. Because they took vanilla, they added some smoke to it. But it's still very watery, it's very light. I think the best part of that perfume is the bottle, to be honest. Have you seen the bottle? It's like this blue to yellow gradient on like transparent glass. It looks pretty cool, the bottle itself, but the perfume, I mean, it's fine, it's pleasant. For that price, uh, I feel like any body spray with vanilla or like, you know, like Beach Vibe Probe, I don't care, Bath and Body Works, Victoria's Secret, you name it, Target, to that matter, will give you the same, the same effect. So yeah, I'm definitely not buying the bottle, but I will try to give it a go and kind of like see if, if anything else pops up. Um, in my mind and I'll definitely let you know if it does otherwise eh. all right let's pause for now I invite you to join me for the next part in the next video because I have like more goodies to show you in terms of niche and really interesting and unusual releases please subscribe please give it a like if you want to help my channel grow thank you so much for your time I'll see you in the next part bye oh my god I'm talking too much I'm talking too much just just, 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 just talking, just, just go through it, just like one, two, three, that's it.